going on with them, right? So uh, this class, like the objective at a high level for this class is students need to understand code and memory. So we're working on that. And another piece is like, obviously, like students need to like uh, reinforce their programming uh, chops. Whatever you learned in programming one, like we kind of like re-emphasize this here by giving you assignments, right? That use functions, variables, stuff like that loops, conditional statements. But also another piece of this class is understanding how expert developers of the C++ standard library or Python or Java or C Sharp, how they created the concept of a string, right? A sequence of characters. And also how they created the concept of a list. How did, I mean, the list just didn't appear from anywhere. Some developer had to go in there and write code in a class, right? Hopefully you were introduced to the class uh, structure in Python. They used the class to create the concept of a string and a list. So that's what we're going to cover this next few lectures. We're, we're going to get a good understanding of how strings were uh, built at a high level, right? Like we're, and with diagrams. And we're going to see how the strings work with parameters, uh, value, and reference parameters, and how they work in looping structures, and the gotchas that you have to be aware of when looping strings and wanting to change characters in a string and what have you. So, so we'll probably go about two lectures for strings and two lectures for lists. And then after that, we'll get into uh, object-oriented programming. OK, so let me go here and uh, go to the ASCII table, right? So we're, we're trying to understand the concept of a string. And we know this it's a sequence of characters, right? Like that's what they've told us. It's a sequence of characters. And if you, if you took Python 1, they drew like some boxes. And they're like, this is memory. And each character goes in memory. And that's a string, right? But we'll get a better understanding of that. So all these characters here, uh, even these hidden ones, right? But all these characters that we visually see, uh, alpha, numeric, and uh, symbols, they are represented in C++ by the concept of a character, right? So we go to code, or well, maybe not code, we go here first. And let's try to understand them in memory first. So we'll go here. A string, right? So first, uh, we need to understand that in C++, there's a concept of a character. So character letter. A character represents one alphanumeric or symbol from that ASCII table. Uh, it could be like, for example, the letter C. That's a character. Uh, it's a holdover from the legacy uh, C that was very pop popular in the seven, 1970s. And C++, again, C++ is not C, okay? So C++ took a lot of the ideas from C. And one of these was uh, the character. But the C language didn't have the concept of a string, OK? So first thing here is, how do we diagram this character in memory, OK? So let's do that. Assuming that's in main, OK? So uh, we have stack. And that was in main and then we know by now that we have to go sequentially so we always take the first available memory block or memory address again i am completely making up this number x represents like some large memory address and we're assuming that 100 were the last uh, three digits of that large memory address where would the letter c go it will go here Okay. 
So that's a character. It's a built-in uh, data type in a C++, like the int or the integer, whole number, and double, uh, which are large floats, large decimal numbers. OK, so let's go and just create a very simple example using a character. So we go here. Also, recall that when I've used strings, I don't use characters. And also for the homework assignment, where I was asking students to convert uh, to letter grade, some students use character. I didn't take any points off, right? But I will say to that, when you're coding at a job and they ask you to do something and to use specific data types, then you use those data types because otherwise they're going to make you redo it and then they're going to be mad because you're doing rework and then their project might be late right so always always like stick to what the requirements say even if you're like hey a character works better here like well maybe we think it works better but maybe uh, i wanted students to use strings so that they know that they have to use an include and the using stud string to use a string in a program right that's why i made students do that <clears throat> So let me uh, go here and let's go to strings close all. Let's go to CMake. And examples, <clears throat> strings. And we will eventually create a string, but first we want to create some simple example. I mean, I've used characters like once or maybe once or twice in this class. Mainly because they're not used a lot in C++ unless you're working like with a small footprint of memory like in robotics application, Mars Rover, where like memory is very limited and the programmer wants to take control of the memory. So then instead of using a string, the programmer uses characters. But then that means they have to do more programming. So a character is straight out of the box in C++, meaning we do not need an include and we do not need a using statement for it. We can simply say character letter equals a. And if we, uh, let me see here, see out letter, I think if I remember correctly, this will display some numeric value. Let me uh, set up uh, this place here. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, we'll see. Mm, no, maybe this one does display. I'm thinking of something else. Sorry. <clears throat> using st not string. I'll change that, right? We're not using string. We're using IO string here. <clears throat> Include IO stream using C out. Uh, shoot be okay let me see here so let's run this piece backslash a I meant to do backslash n so let me do it again the a is right here like it's right here but it's always kind of like hard when I don't use a backslash n I'm kind of like they're searching through all those characters on the terminal. So let's do it again. It's right here, okay? And the other one was right above it. But letter A, right? So so that's the character. Like, ooh hoo <laughs> But it's the, it's the fundamental uh, type or the built-in data type from C++ that's used behind the scenes to create the concept of a string using a class. Okay, so let me save this. Um, if you were disappointed with this example, it's just to show you that the characters, a data type exists in C++. Right. So, but we're uh, what I'm saying is this is the fun the data type that's used behind the scenes to create the concept of a string. Okay, question. 
we have to use include string to use a string and then we have to help C++ with the namespace so we have to use the using statement right using stud string we don't have to use any include with int with double with character or any other built-in type in C++ why do we have to do it for a string because according to the library creators right that's kind of like a special uh, data type like in the English language I guess we have sentences right but we've always called them sentences or paragraphs or essays and they're just like a long sequence of characters but in programming uh, they decided to call a sequence of characters string and for that we do need the include statement and we do need uh, the namespace uh, resolution by using stud string let me draw an image here or diagram to explain what i'm trying to say right so let's go here well actually we'll stay with anatomy of a string right okay so what i'm drawing is not a memory diagram okay it's a class a diagram hopefully you were introduced to classes in uh, Python even if it was like for a week and you kind of like more or less know what a class is uh, a class is simply a structure that encapsulates uh, variables like for example the character sequence and the name of this class is string okay so someone wrote code they created a class and that class has one variable sequence and probably other variables right but before i, I go on and write more here let's use the string okay so let's eliminate well before i eliminate character let me do something here usually by now you know well if you don't then you will in a few seconds right if we do letter dot and it's a class then we will get a list of functionality for that class so integer doesn't have that num doesn't double doesn't right they are built-in built-in types in c++ so uh, they want us to see them not as a class right but if we create a string and then we say lang dot for example size notice size and if we just do dot notice there's a lot of functions for this string right so someone had to write code to make this happen okay someone know, knew how to use the class in C++ to create the concept of a string so we'll go with size right because that's easy to understand for us so also maybe they have like an integer or maybe some other data type that keeps track of the string size okay and we'll stick to that for variables and then they uh, have a function i'll put that to differentiate that from this one uh, size so when we use the string and we say uh, string dot size then it returns the value of this piece here and when they say see out <clears throat> then it displays whatever the sequence list has in my case it was c plus plus so someone wrote code for that that's how strings built okay that's like a high level overview 
and when we, when we get to the memory uh, piece of this class, if you thought we were in the memory piece of this class, we're not. Like we're, I'm just introducing memory concepts. We'll have about four weeks of lectures with like memory. How did how did all this stuff come about? Questions here with the class diagram and like the concept of a string existing, and someone had to write code for a class, and a code has variables and functions in that class structure that creates a concept of something. 